Well, howdy there, folks. I hope you got your popcorn ready because this stock market is getting a whole lot of spicy now at this point in time, folks. Man, do we have a lot of stocks to talk about here today. So many things in regards to the market here today to talk about. Some opportunities in the market, some stocks that are still got a long way to go in terms of downside hedging. So many different subjects to speak about here today. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much for being here, folks. Thank you for being subscribed. And let's get straight into this. So where I actually want to start today's video is just looking at a heat map of the S&P 500 here today, okay? And the reason I want to start this like this today is it just shows you today was absolute red dead redemption out there, as I like to call it here today, okay? Red dead redemption. It's red across the board. The only space that I could see stocks that are green here today, okay? The only one, healthcare. If you see Red Dead Redemption everywhere and healthcare is the only space that's up, that's bad, bad news, okay? That means the whole market's getting wrecked. It's complete risk off because at the end of the day, healthcare, it doesn't matter if the economy is good, bad, interest rates are high, low. It doesn't matter. Like People still need healthcare, okay? And those were the only sorts of stocks that really did well here today, okay? Snowflake. I thought we would talk about Snowflake at the top here because it goes to show you the obliteration that is happening of these stocks right now, okay? Snowflake was down over 6% here today. That's a big downward move, but that's not even the craziest thing in relation to Snowflake here recently, okay? Check this out. So as of yesterday, they were talking about Snowflake's currently going to be down its seventh consecutive day, essentially, okay, on track for a record losing streak. Well, here today it was down another 6%, which means it's now... Eight days, eight days in a row this stock has still been down at this point in time, which just goes to show you the, the real weakness in this market right now and how for really the past week or so, it, these stocks have just been getting absolutely annihilated out there. And Snowflake is certainly no exception. Pulling up the big tech watch list today, ugly, ugly. And you know what I notice when I see this big tech watch list, very important, is I notice that what is seen as riskier of these big tech companies are the ones that are really getting hit, okay? It's not really like the Apples and the Metas and some of those stocks that are seen more safety plays. It's the riskier ones of big tech, right? Snowflake 6% downward move. Shopify continues to get pummeled right now. It seems like, you know, Shopify was doing so tremendous for about a nine month span, but here up until pretty much the last week or two, all of a sudden now no one wants to own Shopify. It seems like there's relentless selling pressure on the stock and no buying pressure. Will I be buying Shopify stock over this next, um, let's call a couple months? The answer to that is, more than likely, actually. I've been waiting for a dip in Shopify, and so I'm loving this move, and don't be surprised if you see me actually buying Shopify stock. I'll probably be buying it. Don't be surprised about buying some shares in the Patreon portfolio tomorrow. By the way, thank you everybody that supports on Patreon. If you're looking to join us in there, check out the description area. Amazon stock got hit today hard. 4.4% move here today. Amazon government related fears in relation to that one. Plus Amazon's a higher valuation of the big tech names. Like you look at this forward P, right? Doesn't mean it's not the best deal. If big tech is actually one of the best deals in big tech and especially of mega cap tech right now. It just doesn't look like it on surface level. AMD stock continues to get hammered. Now that one's back under $100, down 4% here today. Man, AMD might actually be looking a little tasty. Ubi Booba stock continues to get hit day after day, down 4%. And then Adobe stock, surprising one in Adobe, because Adobe's not really necessarily a high valuation name. Adobe stock also... Let's put it this way, okay? Adobe is also a very safe, relatively safe business model compared to many of the mega cap techs. I mean, they got that recurring subscription revenue that just keeps coming in year after year after year. So surprised to see Adobe down that big here today, okay? And look at the stocks that held up very well today, okay? It's stocks like Microsoft. It's stocks like Apple. It's stocks like Meta. Those ones actually perform better than the market for the most part here today. Look at the Qs and then look at these stocks. They actually all outperform the Qs in general today. Good days for those stocks, but those are really seen as a safetyer plays, right? Meta was not last year, but now everybody's looking at Meta as a safe play. Low forward P. They're watching cost heavily. Um, yeah, everybody's looking at Meta as a safe play. Meta's actually getting grouped into now, believe it or not, the Apple and Microsoft game as like the safest of mega cap tech stocks now at this point in time. Netflix was up today, or excuse me, was down less in the market. The only reason was, I'll go into that in detail and what happened here in regards to Netflix a little later on this video. Intel has been like the worst stock of big tech the last few trading days. So that one was just due to like have a day where it wasn't just down huge. Okay. But you can clearly see the correlation between the riskier of big techs versus the stocks that are seen as safety plays in big tech land, right? If I look at some of the plays I'm hedged against right now, uh, yeah, they're, they're, you know, we're printing money certainly today, right? Toll Brothers down nearly 4%. 
Chipotle uh, down big today. Polaris was down, Apple was down, and then SDAO was up very nicely here, which is a, uh, basically a 3x leverage ETF against the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I had a very good day. By the way, a lot of people going into this year were like, well, if you're going to hedge against any index, do it against the NASDAQ. And I was like, heck no. Why would I do it against the NASDAQ? It doesn't make any sense. And sure enough, I was 100% accurate in, in regards to that, right? Look at Dow's performance this year and look at the NASDAQ. It's night and day difference. Like, if you wanted to be hedged against any of the indexes into this year, you want to be hedged against the uh, Dow, right? Now, look at Toll Brothers here today, right? These are my put options in regards to Toll Brothers. I mean, these babies were up 11% here today, right? And this is where I talk about if you do just, if you know how to hedge properly and you just do a little hedging, it goes a long way, a long way in your portfolio. And I mean, this is not even a hedge I've had on here for very long. And it's already up 24% plus, right? And here's the best part when it comes to something like a toll hedge, okay? This is the best part. Look at this. This stock is still up 73% in the past year, right? This stock hasn't even had a big fall yet. Talk to me when this stock is break even of over the past year. Talk to me when this is a $40, $50 stock here today, which by the way, $40 to $50 for Toll Brothers stock is still a higher price. When we talk about low Toll, Toll Brothers numbers uh, in terms of stock price, we're talking 10 to $25 a share, okay? So that's why in some of these hedges, a little hedging goes a long way for portfolio protection overall, okay? In relation to housing, awful, awful, okay? These housing stocks are doing horrible now at this point in time. These were actually stocks that were starting to get hot in the, kind of the early summertime, and now they just can't find footing anywhere. Rocket companies, like I said, this is probably a play at some point in 24, 25, probably 24 at some point in time, this baby will bottom out, and that will be an interesting play, but it's not right now, not with rates going higher, not with what's going on with mortgage rates, not with the fact that buyer demand's drying up worse than ever. We'll get into those numbers in just a moment. Look at RH here today. RH down another 5% plus. Don't be surprised if that baby keeps going down. We'll speak about that one later on. KB Homes down over 4%. Uh, Tricon Residential, which is more of like a rental company, down over 4%. Obviously, we spoke about Toll. DR Horton, Zillow stock down 3% plus here today. Even stocks like John Deere, which we'll speak about John Deere. They just had some layoffs uh, in regards to John Deere. We'll speak about that and what that might mean for the economy in just a moment. But yeah, you look at pretty much across board, anything housing related, right? Not, not good out there. Now, RH is now down 21% in the past month. And it deserves it, to be quite frank. This stock deserves it. You know, I, I've never seen such a questionable decision. The, the fact that Gary Friedman bought back the a billion dollars worth of shares in in you know was crazy to me. Like, like, why would you do that, Gary Friedman? Okay, like you know, and the problem is he is very well aware. As I think he's one of the most well aware of any CEOs in the public markets in terms of speaking about the economy, the risk to the mortgage market, the risk to the housing market, and all those sorts of things. And to see him do that buyback was so ridiculous, so ridiculous. And I'm just like, damn, Gary Freeman, like you, you messed up here. And the market's penalizing him, and it's penalizing him bad. And keep in mind, if this S&P 500 goes down even 5 to 10 percentage points, don't be surprised if RH is down another 20 to 25 percent in that sort of scenario. So I hope RH actually goes under $200. I want Gary Friedman to learn a lesson here. And uh, I also would like to buy the stock potentially at much uh, cheaper prices than it's at right now. But um, yeah, he made a big mistake and now he's paying the price for that mistake. And man, was that a big mistake. John Deere, I told you guys, uh, John Deere's doing a layoff. Yeah, this just came out here today. John Deere doing business as John Deere said, uh, 225 production employees at John Deere uh, are basically gonna be let go effective October 16th. Although John Deere has hired hundreds of employees in the Quad Cities in recent years, the company has consistently stated that each Deere factory Factory balances the size of its production workforce with the need of individual factory to optimize the workforce for the facility, blah, 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 running a business, okay, running a dang business. The factory leadership told the employees about the layoffs during a meeting on Wednesday. So um, those are sorts of things, you know, I don't think anybody got that worried when they saw the big tech companies doing layoffs last year, right? A lot of the market weakness last year was just the market trying to react to the Fed raising interest rates so much and how that changed the whole risk reward kind of stocks, right? But I don't think anybody really got scared or worried when they saw the big tech companies doing layoffs, right? It was like, oh, those companies just overhired and they got too excited and interest rates have changed. But I'm telling you, these, these companies like John Deere, they matter a lot more, a lot more in terms of people's perspectives on could we actually eventually see weakness in the, in the employment market? Could we see 
a recession in 24, those sorts of things. These are the sorts of companies people look at for this. So it's just a very, very early tell in regards to this of maybe the Fed lags catching up. I think the Fed lags, once again, are going to kick in likely in 2024. I don't think we're even seeing the Fed lags really hit yet. I think it's coming. But that's one of those things you got to look at, okay? Now, worse than ever, okay, is this is a disaster, a complete disaster for the housing market. Look at this, okay? Home buyers made fewer deals in August as rough housing conditions persisted. That may get even worse, one housing expert said. Sales of previously owned homes declined 0.7% in August from the month prior to an annualized rate of about 4 million, the National Association of Realtors said on Thursday. The underperformed, uh, that underperformed by 0.7% increase and 4.1 million annualized that economists were expecting. The pace of which was down 15.3% from a year ago is the third slowest of the current housing cycle. The data underscores the muted effects, the muting effect of higher mortgage rates. Listen to this. Mortgage rate changes will have this is a quote. Mortgage rate changes will have a big impact over the short run, while job gains will have steady positive impact over the long run. We'll see about that. Remember, we're already at full employment. We're already at full employment. Okay, it only gets worse from here. Before adding to the press uh, call later, in the short run, it's possible that mortgage rates may go up to even. Eight percent, and that's for great credit scores. Okay, if you have a bad credit score, you're already in the eights likely right now. Okay, holy smokers, this ain't no dang jokers, folks. Okay, now we're talking about mortgage rates in the eights. This is going to be absolutely brutally devastating, as if the housing market hasn't already been devastating enough. Look at this chart I'm showing you right now. Okay, this is a chart, the purple right here. This is where we're at right now. Okay. I think we're going to go down more to where I drew that yellow line there, okay? Which is absolutely brutal, as brutal as this almost tornado going on here in Las Vegas uh, that wins crazy sometimes, right? Here's a deal, folks, okay? Think about this. We're about to, we're, we're in fall time now at this point in time, right? After fall comes winter. Winter's usually a bad time for real estate sales in general, right? You got the holiday season, you got you know, cold weather, a lot of people just aren't that interested in housing in relation just to, to winter time, right? That's why there's always an exciting spring selling season, right? People come out of their homes and look to buy new, new, new homes and things like that, right? Look to move, uh, you know, kids get out of school in the summertime. Summertime's usually pretty good for housing. Wintertime's not usually a very good time. If you're talking about we got to deal with mortgage rates of 8%, the housing market's going to be dead this winter. Now, if you were to add on some sort of situation where we actually had recession fears really start creeping up in a major way with the stock market declining at the same time, I'm telling you, you're talking about worse than the great financial crisis in terms of how many homes are selling, okay? doesn't mean housing prices are going down to great financial crisis type pricing. It just means the, the pace of sales would be down there this winter. It could be the most brutal winter we've seen in the real estate market ever. I'm being honest, like it could be the most brutal we've ever seen in history. It's not looking good, folks. Okay, it's not looking good. We'll see where it all shakes out, but I'm just telling you, the whole game does not look good when it comes to housing. And let's be honest, housing, you know, I always say housing is the most important sector, in my opinion, in the overall financial markets. And think about this, right? A lot of these home builders have sold a lot of homes here recently, signed a lot of contracts with folks. And what if there's some sort of situation where mortgage rates keep going higher, people walk away from those homes being built, right? And all of a sudden the home builders are stuck on those homes and then they got to try to sell it. Well, if all of a sudden you're trying to sell it when the mortgage rates are 8% plus, let's say for instance, right? Meanwhile, the stock market's dropping and you have real recession fears creep up and you have potentially people starting to lose jobs that, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh, okay? So there's just a lot of risk to the, the housing market that I just don't think people are being realistic about right now. And I think it needs to be considered. And I think it needs to be considered in a very, very serious manner. Okay. AI stocks here today got hit across the board. Look at Palantir down over 5%. Now the, the crazy thing with Palantir is you had Alex Karp, the Palantir CEO. Listen to this. Okay. This man went on CNBC here today and basically said that, you know, they can't even keep up with demand of the AIP product they have. Right. Which is exciting. But at the same time, people say, well, what if they're not making any money from that? Sure. Okay. But at the end of the day, that's exciting because that means there's got to be a crazy amount of engagement, which means, you know, obviously Palantir can sell Foundry and other products to these folks, okay? So the man went on CNBC, said that 
And yet the stock was still down 5% here today, which just goes to show you the weakness. And all these AI stocks got hit. Amazon, which is an AI play when it comes to the AWS side, got hit. AMD is really an AI play for next year when they're in relation to starting to sell some of their uh, AI chips. They've just been a lagger to NVIDIA. NVIDIA has really got out in front of this. And NVIDIA has benefited in a massive way this year. AMD is more of a beneficiary in 2024 and in future years. Adobe down 4% here today. Oracle down over 3%, which, you know, I'm still taking a peek at Oracle trying to figure out you know, a, a bunch of private stock group members were basically in the Discord chat were sharing their opinions on Oracle. And from what I'm hearing on Oracle, you know, because we have a lot of, of, of folks that work in, you know, the space that they'll use Oracle products or other products in general. And from what I've gathered, a lot of people say <laughs> that a lot of people hate Oracle, to be honest. But from what I'm also hearing is their database is the best of breed. So... I'm trying to do a little more research there, trying to see from insiders inside the industry what their opinions are in this, and um, also looking over the financial statements and obviously all the publicly available information that I, I have available to me. You know, Oracle's income statement looks pretty exciting. The growth rates look pretty exciting, but their balance sheet looks really ugly. NVIDIA down to $410 now at this point in time. Holy smokers. Could you see me buying NVIDIA at some point? It's a possibility, folks. Tesla got hit, not as a surprise. At Google McDougal, obviously, uh, is supposed to be an AI beneficiary. That stock got hit as well, right? Look at banking. So banking, you hear you have SoFi here today, right? Down 4.4%. Uh, uh, SoFi's back under 8 bucks again. You know, if you got a real risk off market again, unfortunately, SoFi could go back to the 5 to $6 range if this market keeps going risk off. I mean, at the end of the day, S and P five hundred seems like it goes down one percent. SoFi is going down like four percent, five percent. That's just what you have to deal with in the short term, right? On the flip side, it, you know, S P five hundred goes up a few points. SoFi blasts higher. So SoFi stock kind of like represents almost like a call option or put option on the market, depending upon which way you think it's going to go. You think the market's going down? SoFi is probably going down a lot more in the market. Stock market's going up. SoFi is probably going up a whole lot more in the market. Ally was down over two percent here today, which. They're actually benefiting in a massive way from actually higher rates right now. Just, you know, a lot of customers are moving their money to Allies, you know, because they're known for having savings accounts products. They've been around for a long time, established company, right? Goldman Sachs is down about 2% here today. KRE, I'm keeping an eye on this one. This is a regional banking index, folks. Look at this. This baby's tanking. And um, here's the deal. Back when there was like peak fear around the regional banks, right, which was back in May, the regional bank index at that time was around 36. Right now we're at 41. So if we see this approach, that 36 number, folks, that's going to be crazy because that would mean we're back in your peak fear. But here's the thing to, to consider, right? Look at if interest rates are going to go up anymore or if they're going to stay here for longer, it's going to put more and more pressure on a lot of these banking names, a lot of these regional banking names. And that leads you to the question of could we have more systemic problems in the banking system, right? And especially when you take into account that a lot of these, even if you go outside of regional banks and you think about big banks, right? Folks have waking, are starting to wake up in a major way. Like, why am I going to keep my money at J.P. Morgan Chase? Which I own J.P. Morgan Chase, so I wish everybody kept their money there. But a lot of people are waking up saying, why am I going to keep my money there where I earn nothing? Why not move my money over to Ally? Why not move my money to, I don't know, SoFi even, right? Or Marcus, uh, the product that Goldman Sachs has, right? Where you can earn 4% plus on a savings account right now, or even up to 5%. Why not move my money to treasuries for the next three months, six months, and earn an uh, annual yield of 5% plus on that, right? These are things people are starting to consider. And if you're talking about more deposits moving out of the banks, that could be a situation where you could start to have some systemic problems creep up, folks, okay? And especially when, with the capital requirements a lot of these banks have on now. I don't know, man. That's one of those kind of like scary things of like, ugh, we're, we're a little uncomfortable in the banking names. It's clear in relation to these stock prices, how they're reacting, right? I checked out the Kathy Wood watch list here today, folks, okay? And... Obviously, the Kathy Wood stocks have certainly been hit, getting hit recently along with this market, right? Teladoc's back under 20 bucks now at this point in time. Unity Software cannot catch a break right now. Even after they made their switch up change, which I'm sure, I'm still not sure if that was even a good move or not, this stock down to the 5% here today. Look at Square Stocks. Square Stocks, 45 bucks now, folks. 45 bucks on Square. This stock, it, 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 I mean, literally just every day it goes lower. Every flipping flapjack and day it goes lower, right? And this is where you're starting to get in this market, right? That you start to, cons I, I showed you Snowflake, right? Down eight consecutive days. When you start to get in this market, folks, of your stocks seem like they go down day after day after day, you start to think every day you wake up like, man, my, my account's just going to be lower. It's just going to be lower. 
That's what we saw happen in 2022, right? By the time you got to Q4 2022, people just started waking up, figuring every day my account's going to be lower. It's going to be lower. It's going to be lower, right? Some people left the market. Some people stopped buying stocks, right? Or didn't buy the dip in that. And by the way, those people regret it massively now. But that's what happens. And so if you keep these stocks just going down day after day after day, eventually people just stop buying them. And eventually they just, you know, even start selling at some really, really bad prices. But that's the market we're getting into. If you can get these stocks to go down seven consecutive days, five consecutive days, or let's say eight out of 10 days, it's brutal for the investor psyche out there, folks. And that square is just a great example of just a brutalized stock right now at this point in time. The fintechs in general can't catch a break. And the reason being is if interest rates are seen as going higher or just being in a higher place for longer, it puts pressure on the business models of it, what is seen for all these companies out there, okay? That's just the way it's viewed. A firm was down over 8% here today. Obviously, you spoke about SoFi and Square, right? Hood was, is back under 10 bucks. Look at that. Robinhood is back under 10 bucks, folks. Holy smoke, is that no jokers? I might, I don't know, we'll see. Eventually, I might step in, Hood. Uh, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, okay? PayPal, back under 60 bucks again now at this point in time. PayPal just continues to get brutalized in regards to this. It is what it is, okay? Uh, as somebody that wants to continue to buy the stock through year end, I'll take as many shares I can get for as cheap as possible. Coinbase continues to get hit. Upstart continues to get hit. FinTech is no tech, okay? No one wants to be in FinTech right now. That's just bottom line. They will all flood back in eventually, but for right now, you can't find a buyer for these stocks. Literally, you can't find a freaking buyer for these stocks. That's why they just keep going down day after day after day. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if they got new CEOs incoming. Doesn't matter what their business model is. Doesn't matter what they've done in the past, what they're gonna do in the future, or this or that. None of it matters. All that matters for people right now is sell FinTech at any, at any price, okay? It's not a smart strategy. They'll come back and they'll regret it long term, but for right now it is what it is, okay? But here's where things start getting really freaky, okay? Really freaky in this market. Look at Dollar Tree stock. Dollar Tree stock, what it should be seen as one of the safest companies in the whole entire stock market. It's a freaking dollar stores, okay? They own dollar store brands. This stock is down 27% this year. 27% and it just hit a new low. It just hit a new low low. This stock can't find a bottom anywhere. And this is freaking people out because people are like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Let's say the consumer is supposed to have been hit. Okay. By all this inflation. Well, wouldn't that mean more and more people go into dollar stores because they're tight on money? You would think so, but yet the stock is at lows right now, right? And it just goes lower day after day after day. You think, okay, if there's a recession coming, wouldn't investors like to pile into the dollar store type companies because those would benefit in a recession just as they did in the great financial crisis and certainly coming out of the great financial crisis? Conventional wisdom will tell you yes, but no one wants to, to, to get into these stocks. And here's a, I don't know if you guys saw this, okay? This actually came out a few weeks ago, but it kind of went on the DL, okay? Dollar store flash warning signs on consumer spending. But here was the most important part of the whole thing, okay? Quote, our core con customers continue to tell us that they feel financially constrained, Chief Executive Joe, uh, Jeff Owen said. Quote, her savings are gone, and so certainly she is still living with inflationary pressures. Her savings are gone. Interesting comments there. I mean, I don't know how much savings people that go to dollar stores really have. I mean, dollar store really caters to people that are living paycheck to paycheck. That's just what it is. Let's just call it what it is, Okay. That's where dollar stores really thrive. It's the people living paycheck to paycheck that just need to get whatever they get to get by, okay? It's not the same type of consumer that Costco has, where Costco, somebody's looking to get the best deal overall, right? Um, I'm going to spend $25 on toilet paper, so I have a million rolls of toilet paper, okay? Uh, dollar stores, like, I need to buy one roll of toilet paper for as cheap a price as I can possibly get it, and that, that's enough for me for now, okay? And I'll come back when I need to get my next roll of toilet paper or my next roll of paper towels. It's a whole different clientele base. And so when you see even that clientele base, you know, pull back, I, it's, a little, it's a little scary. I will say that. It's a little dang frightening out there, but that's the market we're living in right now, right? But it goes beyond that because you would look, say, okay, Target's got a much better consumer. Target's got a more of a middle class, upper middle class consumer, Target can't catch a break. Target's just hit new lows, okay? The stock is now down almost 27% year to date. Oh, does that remind you of a stock? Oh, <gasps> Dollar Tree. So wait a minute. It, folks that are really tight on money aren't doing good, supposedly, but then the middle class and upper middle class supposedly aren't doing good as either. 
which is Target's customer base. Okay, so what, is everybody not doing good? You're ready to see the most shocking thing, the most shocking thing in relation to Target. You won't even believe how far the stock has fallen. Check this out. This is insane. This stock, the last time I could find Target stock lower than it is today was back in March of 2020 in the Rona crash, folks. In the Rona crash. That's the last time I could find Target stock cheaper than it is today. Okay, Target stock's a steel deal, okay? There's no debating that. There's no debating that. You want to come and tell me that Target is not a steel deal? You're not going to win that debate. I guarantee you, okay? This stock is at prices it was back in March of 2020. This is a little bit insane now at this point in time. I can tell you these sell-offs are getting way too overpushed in relation to a lot of these stocks. I don't cover Dollar Tree, but I could bet you that that stock's probably um, getting way overpushed to the downside as well. All these these type of stocks are. And eventually we're going to look back and Target's going to be 200 plus dollar stock and people are going to be like, that was kind of stupid. Like we pushed Target stock down to prices it was back in March of 2020. That probably wasn't the smartest idea. When the whole economy was closed and people didn't think, you know, any stores are going to be open. Like, yeah, eventually people are going to realize this is kind of dumb what's going on right now, but it's the market we're in right now. And that's the arbitrage opportunities for folks like myself and maybe some of you guys out there that we can look at some of these different stocks being priced at stupid prices and take advantage of stupid deals out there, right? Hawaiian Airlines is down seven bucks now at this point in time. This stock was the hardest hit of travel stocks. You know, obviously what happened in Maui, that's going to be a significant problem for Hawaiian Airlines for, you know, at least the next few quarters. I don't think long term it's a problem, but it is a problem for the next few quarters. And obviously, if you're talking about any potential travel slowdown, which there could be potentially a travel slowdown coming in definitely in 2024, that's going to definitely hit Hawaiian Airlines. So my guess is the stock probably bottoms around Q4, Q1. Not a stock I personally own. Probably not one I'm interested in unless it goes to maybe four bucks or so. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, that, that's my guess. Probably Q4, Q1, sometime in there. The stock will probably have gotten rid of all the bad news. You want to hear the craziest news? I got the craziest story maybe of the financial markets here today. I couldn't even believe when I was reading this. Check this out. Neo is a first electric vehicle maker with its own smartphone. Will it boost shares? Neo launched the Neo phone at an investor event in Shanghai on Thursday, and the company has already begun taking orders. The smartphone will feature a 6.8 inch OLED curved screen with a rear camera module that includes three, one, two, three, 50 megapixel cameras. In terms of memory, the Neo phone has 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. What? The Neo phone will have basically all day battery. In addition, the smartphone will support rapid 66 watt wired charging, 50 watt wireless charging, and 10 watt wireless reverse charging. Oh my gosh, okay. The Neo operating system for the smartphone will obviously be delivered by Android. Yeah, I wasn't thinking they were going to make their own uh, operating system as well, right? In terms of pricing, they're going to price this baby about a thousand bucks. I'm like, dang, man, I kind of want one of these. I'll be honest, man, this phone sounds freaking awesome. I think I kind of want one of these, man. This thing sounds pretty dang cool. I got to be honest with you guys, okay? No, in terms of analysts, they're saying this is not a smart move by Neo. The company's in an unprofitable position, and for them to launch a phone is just ridiculous, right? So I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. Like, you know, is it something that makes me go buy Neo stock? No, but I, I do think it's intriguing. And it cracks me up because you know what? I don't, I'm sure for you guys that have followed Tesla and Elon Musk and all this stuff over the years, you've had to have seen this over time, right? There's always been rumors about a Tesla phone, right? And Tesla could make a phone. Always been rumors about that. And because of Starlink and what Elon Musk has with Starlink and maybe the phone connects via Starlink and you have internet everywhere in the world and all these sorts of things, right? There's always, and obviously the Tesla engineers are, are you know, the cream of the crop. So they could they could easily make a phenomenal smartphone and, and Elon has such an ability to capture talent. He could hire the best workers in the world um, to work on a smartphone and the design and come up with something outside the box that is very different. Right. And that would get everybody talking. There's no doubt if, if Tesla came out with the freaking smartphone folks, there's no doubt everybody in the world is talking about that. Okay. That doesn't just like, Oh, Tesla launched a smartphone and like no one pays attention. No Tesla launched a smartphone Everybody in the freaking world is talking about that. And it's always just been a kind of a rumor thrown out there about could Tesla do something like that. I think Elon is going to pay very close attention to what sales might look like because we know Elon's very tied in China, obviously from the production factories in Shanghai. I think Elon's going to pay really close attention to the sales numbers 
of this Neo smartphone? What's the demand? Because if it's even decent, then Elon knows he could have a banger product out there. And we know the smartphone is incredibly, incredibly profitable product, right? If you do it right, it can be so profitable. Apple's shown that, right? You just have to be able to nail it out of the ballpark, right? And I got to say, folks, the smartphone market's dead right now. There's no innovation happening in any substantial way. That's why people make jokes all the time about the iPhones, the same iPhone for the last, like, you know, 10 years. There's nothing really exciting happening in the smartphone space. I think this Neo smartphone is the, de- the most exciting thing to probably happen in a while. And so it's a space that needs to be somebody come in that's actually a competitive threat and do something interesting here. Do something outside the box. And uh, people will be intrigued by that. And it will get a ridiculous amount of attention. And I can guarantee you it will get a ridiculous amount of sales. It, it's Tesla launch a smartphone. I'm buying it the very first day it comes out. I don't care if that thing's $2,000 freaking dollars. I'm buying it the day it comes out. So anyways, uh, we'll see what happens there. But... Uh, I think Elon might pay attention to that, okay? Cisco System, which has been a stock that a lot of people are actually excited and actually feel like it's a good deal, just made this acquisition that people are like, are you serious? How could you screw this up, Cisco Systems? Cisco Systems just announced they're going to buy Splunk, which is a cybersecurity software company, for $157 a share. It's a $28 billion deal. People are like, are you kidding me? You're going to spend $28 billion in this market right now with interest rates where they're at? What? What? You know, I'm, I, don't, I don't follow Cisco systems super close. I don't follow Splunk super close, but I will say that sounds a little questionable. $28 billion in this market right now? That's a huge premium. That's like a 20%-ish type premium on Splunk, if not more than that. Ugh, okay. Paramount, Netflix, and Disney shares the streaming companies move higher as writers and, and producers neared a potential, keywords, potential, potential deal okay folks so don't get too excited about that it's a potential deal to the writers guild of america strike people close to the negotiations told david favor who works for cnbc okay so that's got to end at some point in time that's been going on for a long time um you know at some point in time you know people are going to run out of money like that's got to be fixed okay so yeah it's um, eventually it's going to happen right now, Wall Street's May response to tech IPOs shows Silicon Valley's valuation problem. Arm Instacart, uh, Instacart and Clavio are all trading near their IPO price, showing lackluster enthusiasm among public investors. You know, uh, people are worried about valuations. Finally, this is coming to fruition. You know, I've seen what's going on in the VC market for years, okay? They value these companies ridiculously. They don't even value them based upon profitability or anything like that. They don't even value them based upon revenue. You know what they value them based upon? How many users they have and customers. And just like, it's a whole silly game. And then basically how this works is one VC kind of sells it to the next VC. And then they bid that up in the next round and bid up in the next round. And as long as everybody's kind of in on the game, it just keeps pushing the prices higher and higher and higher. That all ended obviously in 2022. That all ended in a massive way in 2022, right? As soon as you took away the cheap money, the whole game of, hey, you give us more, you give us more, and then we'll take it public at even a bigger number, and everybody makes money and everybody's happy. The game's ended now. And so all these guys are looking around, and now these folks are trying to take these companies public, and they're losing money. A lot of money on the, especially the last few rounds that these companies did. So, man, it's an, it's an ugly situation. VC land's not in a good place. And that doesn't bode well, obviously, for Northern California. And, uh, you know, anyways, that's a whole situation that's going on there, right? This will just crack me up. IRS will substantially reduce audits on low-income tax credit, commissioner says, and part of the agency's broader effort to fix inequality in enforcement with a focus on auditing higher earners, partnerships, and large corporations. Like, I never heard of a poor person getting audited in my life. Like, the only people that get audited are usually big companies or high net worth individuals. Like, the, the more money you make, the higher your, your chances of getting audited is. That's just as simple as that. You start making, you know, a half million dollars a year, okay, your, your chances of you getting audited just went up. You start making a few million dollars a year, your chances of getting audited just went up. You make more than 10 million a year, okay, now we're talking about high chance of audit. You may, you're somebody that brings in 100 million plus a year, ho, 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 baby, your, your chance of getting audited, so that was just intriguing, okay? So a few things uh, folks need to do out there, okay? The platter, the buffet is being set for you, okay? It's all being set, the table's being set, 
okay, for you to come and eat. And this is just like what happened in Q4 2022, right? Where we had this platter of stocks, this buffet of stocks kind of just thrown out there at some pretty incredible pricing that people are just like, wow, I'm getting this stock at this price? Okay. And you've got to know what you're doing in this market though, because otherwise you're going to miss out on incredible opportunities because you're not going to really know like what's the best deals versus not best deals. Because if you're given a platter at a buffet, you, you got to know what you want to go eat, right? Think about it like this. You could have a platter at a buffet. Let's say you go to the Wynn Buffet, okay? Wynn Buffet is amazing, by the way. You go to the Wynn Buffet. And if you don't know like what to do there, you do some pretty silly things. I took my kids to Wynn Buffet. Do you know what they did? They grabbed rolls. They grabbed rolls. Come on, anybody knows anything about a buffet knows you don't grab any damn bread at a buffet, okay? That's going to fill you up. That's the silliest choice you could ever make. You need to go for the prime rib. You need to go for the lobster. You need to go for the king crab legs. We're not screwing around eating bread, okay? So if you don't know what you're doing, you make some silly decisions. If you do know what you're doing, you can go there and maybe eat a little more than what you paid for the buffet, which by the way, wind buffet is like 75 bucks. That thing's hard to eat your way out of that one. Okay. I don't know if you can make a profit in that one. Right. But you know, like, like I, the deals I was taking advantage of were just the risk rewards were insane last year. Right. And now we're sitting on a $315,000 gain in regards to meta. Right. I was getting shares at just silly deals. Right. I know how to value companies. I know where the deals are at and I'm able to take advantage of those Tesla and Maesla, I'm already sitting on $23,000 plus of gains on Tesla stock at this point in time. And Tesla's business model hasn't even turned for a uh, exciting way better. Right. Amazon already sitting on $23,000 worth of gains in this one. If you know what you're doing, you can take advantage of deals and you know where the best pricing is. If you don't really truly know how to value companies, financial statements, how to judge business models, all those sorts of things, you're going to be in some trouble, folks. Okay, The Financial Fortress program I have, which is going to be pinned common down there to, to apply for that, uh, that is a program that teaches you everything you could ever want to know about being able to take advantage of the, uh, let's call it the uh, platter that's at the buffet. And you also get access to our Discord chat, which has a ridiculous amount of, I mean, the amount of people that have hit six or seven figures and there's astronomically high over time. So yeah. Get your, get your knowledge up. Get your network up, folks. Apply to join a private group. That's pinned comment down there. See you tomorrow. Much love and have a great day.